Hello, good morning, and welcome back to another episode of Changing Room Thoughts. I'm your host, Karina. If you're new here, welcome. Um, You'll like my content if you have ever once had a critical thought about fashion and self-expression. And if you are returning, thanks for being here. Today's episode is an interesting one for a Monday morning podcast because this is all about self-care. So I hope after your first day back at work, maybe you can use some of the things you learned in this podcast episode to up-level your nighttime routine or experience. For those of you who are joining on YouTube and or are watching a video format of this podcast on Spotify, I always describe my fit. So here is your weekly fit check. The sleeveless purple knit turtleneck that I'm wearing is a vintage find from Jones, New York. I honestly don't remember where I thrifted this from, but it was back in San Francisco. It's a beautiful eggplant color, so I wore a matching purple lip. I'm also really into these like low slung waist belts. This one I thrifted from a shop in Brooklyn and the skirt is just something I got off the street in Korea. So that's what we're wearing today. A disclaimer, none of the products in this video are sponsored. I am just a self-care queen. So I'm going to share all of the little gadgets, gizmos, and potions I use to keep myself feeling my best. Now, you might be thinking, Karina, on a fashion podcast, why are you talking about self-care? Are you just a sellout to the, I don't know, multi-billion dollar skincare and wellness industry? Maybe I am. (laughs) Maybe I've bought into the whole capitalist rebranding of uh, self-care and wellness, but I also don't care. So what do fashion and self-care have to do with each other? I honestly think that fashion is a form of self-care and self-care is a form of fashion because I think personal style is actually less about what exactly you're wearing, but what kind of person you are. Um, Sometimes I think fashion and personal style is less about what you wear and rather who you want to be. How does this person take care of themselves? How someone treats themselves is a reflection of how they perceive their self-worth, how seriously they take their comforts and their boundaries. For example, I was reading this Vogue article, 24 Hours with Donatella Versace, and at the end of every day, at 10 p.m., she takes a candlelit bath with scented oils and bath salts, and afterwards, she rubs herself with a perfumed body cream, which feels like a wonderful indulgence and gets her in the mood for bed. Queen shit. Another point about what self-care has to do with fashion. I think fashion is calling upon and using the tools in your arsenal to get into the character that you want to portray for that day. And self-care is one of those tools in that arsenal. Other tools might be your tabbies, your acne studio scarf, your Martine Rose sneakers. For me, it is my self-care routine. And I do think there is something to be said about self-care getting your mental in a place where you feel more psychologically safe and more comfortable to express yourself because you have invested time into yourself to feel like the best version of you and therefore you feel like you can take more creative liberty in how you choose to interact with the outside world. I've bought into it, I've drank the Kool-Aid and I'm okay with that. And even if it's all just a placebo, If it makes me feel better about myself, if it makes me feel more ready to take on challenges throughout the day, even if it's not a causal relationship, I don't care. I'm going to do it. Anyone who knows me knows I am a self-care queen. Oftentimes, when social plans fall through, I am glad. (laughs) Even though I'm an extrovert, once I find out that a party is no longer happening, it's canceled due to rain... I've already started planning out my bath skincare routine. 
The other day, I had the most luxurious night in. I want to share a little bit about my perfect night in and what I do to feel like the best version of myself, such that no matter what I'm wearing or where I'm going, I just feel like that top bitch. I want to take you guys through, as a self-proclaimed self-care queen, the things I need in place first to enjoy my night. First of all, my self-care routine actually starts like there's like a preamble before the self-care does anyone else clean before they do self-care because like I cannot take a bath knowing that my bathroom is dirty because my cat's litter box is also in the bathroom so I have to clean out the litter box I have to make sure it's not you know nasty the dishes are put away the laundry is like not overflowing you know I don't want to have to get out of my bath and then worry about other things. So my self-care routine starts with getting rid of all obligations. Notifications are off. All emails I have to respond to are done. Things that need to be cleaned are clean. I can just get out of the bath and be a woman. You know what I mean? So that's what I start with. After all of those little chores are done, I think what really elevates and enhances a self-care session is making sure that you're taking care of all five senses sight taste smells sounds sensations every self-care night starts with a feel-good drink yours might be alcoholic and that's totally fine i don't drink any alcohol because i'm allergic I'm not being facetious or pretentious. I just, I literally am. So my feel-good drink is usually like cold and fizzy. I'll put up a screenshot of what my bath time setup is. But last night, my most luxurious pinnacle of all self-care nights started with a strawberry ramune drink. It's light, it's fizzy. When I'm in the bath, I want something cold to contrast with the heat of the bath. So something cold and fizzy, I always like to stick it in the fridge before my bath. Then the centerpiece of every self-care night for me is the bathtub. What really, two things sold me on the apartment that I currently live in. One is the lighting, as you can see. And the second thing was the deep soaking tub. I am a bath time girl. Now that I have lived with a deep soaking tub, I fear I have been spoiled and I can no longer live without a deep soaking tub. I fill up my deep soaking tub, you know, get it to like medium hot, and then I light a bunch of candles. I light some unscented candles at varying heights. I have little tea light candles. Then I have like these kind of tall column candles, maybe like five inches tall. And then I have one scented candle. And if you follow me on TikTok, you would know I'm all about cherries this fall. So I went to my local ABC store. If you live in New York, you'll see these everywhere. I think they're also a Hawaiian thing, but I got this black cherry scented candle and the description reads, sweetened deep red juice of black cherries. Very much my vibe this fall. And I love this color. Oh, so good. So I'll light the candles. Again, the sights. If you're taking a bath with those fluorescent bathroom overhead lights, girl, what are you doing? It's just like so stress inducing, those overhead lights. So no, the candles are on, the lights are off. You know, it's just me and this water. It's got to engage your senses. We've got scents, we've got sights, we've got taste. And in terms of sound, so I like to either listen to an audiobook, mostly really one audiobook, which is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. I've been listening to that on repeat. Sometimes I have to like listen to the same chapter a couple times just to make sure that I infuse all of that good wisdom into my brain. While I'm doing all of this indulgent, you know, feel good self-care. I feel like sometimes feel good self-care gets vilified on the internet. Like, don't pretend like you can run away with your problems with a bath. I'll take a bath if I want. But in any ways, um, I do agree that a, 
uh, a foundation of self-care is not just feeling good, but also creating a safe space such that you can have critical thoughts and reflect and be alone with yourself so that you can work on yourself. And that is an aspect integral to a self-care night as well. So self-care nights, I also usually journal or I, um, I go on Pinterest and I start like manifestation boards, things like that. And I listen to self-help books like The Artist's Way. And if I'm not listening to a self-help book, I'm listening to some kind of like chill jazz. I have a playlist on Spotify called Peaceful Ecstasy. It's lots of nujabis. Sometimes like jazz. I'll link it in the description box. But yeah, I like to surround myself with calming music. And then I scroll on my phone. I'm like on Pinterest. I'm on the real real. This is when I do a lot of my shopping. This is when I do a lot of like saving images that inspire me. Thinking about what kind of person I want to be when I get out of the bathtub. Who in my life I want to spend more time with. This is what I mean. Bath time is the centerpiece of self-care night for this reason. And then... Once I've kind of been on my phone for a while and then my skin has kind of soaked in all that moisture and it's gotten really soft, I start getting into like the the skincare stuff. And I'm sure once I said self-care, this is what you thought I was going to start talking about. So tried and true TikTok girl favorite tree hut sugar scrubs. I love these. When I have the time, I put it all over my body. I scrub everything off and it leaves my skin feeling so soft. I have dry skin, so this really gets me feeling smooth and beautiful. Of course, I shave and then I do all of that. Yeah, this is the part of the self-care night that is all about the products, the little potions and lotions. I love talking about this and I love watching TikToks about it too. People's like shower night routine and like the different scents that they use. I think definitely one simple luxury that I want to introduce into my life is like shower gels in different scents so I can pick and choose how I feel that night. But I digress. I step out of the bathtub I dry myself off. I wrap myself in my fuzzy robe. Wait, let me get it. Let me show you. This is a full on like I am walking you through every single detail of the perfect self-care night in. This lounge robe that my boyfriend got me. He's the best. It is so soft. And I wrap myself in it after the bath. Once I get out of the bath, you know when you have a product that you use really sparingly because you're scared of it running out? That's me with this. This is the Lee Organics Palma Rosal Revival Mist. And I keep this thing in the fridge. You know, I let things go bad in the fridge on accident all the time. But the one thing in my fridge I keep tabs on the most is this. And it's You can see it's almost out and I'm terrified because this thing is a little bit on the pricier side. I think it retails at $51. It's lasted me a couple months. I would say like, it's lasted me like five months. And it is the only face mist that I've ever used that sincerely leaves my skin feeling more moisturized than before I sprayed it like it leaves a nice like slight tackiness and I think I'm definitely going to repurchase it it's going to hurt my wallet a little bit but I'm going to do it I did receive this for free from a brand event that I did so that's one I keep that in the fridge so I spray on the face mist the other thing that I keep in the fridge and I learned this from Jade Beglin on TikTok or Begelin on TikTok and I use her reusable 4AM silicone masks and I love these because I think first of all they're really cute like these are called the overtime under eye mask which I think is such a cute name because the whole point is that it helps your it helps your skincare work over time 
under your eyes. Like that's so cute. They're reusable, so you can kind of swap them with your favorite serums, etc. I do want to try their their skincare line as well, but I just want to finish what I currently have. And I use the Sunday Riley CEO Vitamin C Brightening Serum for under my eyes. I keep this in the fridge. I pop it under my eyes. I slap the reusable thing on top. After I am done with the little under eye thing, ugh, after I am done with like cooking my under eyes with these uh, silicone reusable eye patches, I use a hyaluronic acid serum. It's the Goku Jun. It's like the hyaluronic acid milk. I learned this from a dermatologist on TikTok that while hyaluronic acid is known as kind of a cure-all for dry skin, it's supposed to make your skin really moisturized, chemically what it's doing is drawing water to your skin surface. And if you have dry skin, that water is just going to evaporate out the other side. It's going to evaporate out of your body. So you're drying yourself out from the inside out if you only use hyaluronic acid. So... After I put on the hyaluronic acid serum, I cover it with the Iliun Ceramide Concentrate Cream. Now, ceramide, I learned this from my own dermatologist as well, helps lock in the moisture. So after I use a prescription cream on my problem areas for eczema, I learned that ceramide is the thing you need to lock it in. So after I put on the hyaluronic acid, I slip on some ceramide. And I kind of do the same thing with my body as well. This might be overkill, but I swear by this technique. It's my guilty pleasure. Um, you know how you layer skincare on your face from lightest to heaviest? I layer moisturizers on my body from lighter to heavier. Now, is this a little unnecessary? Yes. Does it make me feel really good when I wake up in the morning and my skin is really soft? Yes, so I'm gonna keep doing it. When it comes to layering lotions on my body, I start with a lighter consistency ceramide cream that can be easily absorbed by my skin. I have been loving the peach ceramide body milk lotion. I got this from We. Can you believe that? Um, shout out to We. I love We. They have the most amazing, like, um, Asian beauty products, etc. in addition to the groceries. So love that. Shout out to them. So I layer a lighter ceramide lotion underneath. And then on top, I'll use a thicker like shea butter body, body butter. Um, the one I really like is from Island Soap and Candle Works. And this scent is Hawaiian Sunrise. You can get these at Hawaiian ABC stores. Um, but it's like a really nice, thick and creamy. It smells like, oh, it smells like mandarin oranges and like tropical citrus. Oh my God, it's so good. And because this is slightly thicker and leaves such a beautiful scent, this is my favorite thing to top off my skin with before I go to bed. So I get into my little silk slip dress before I go to bed ultimate comfort um, then I take a not very strong perfume just something to mist before I go to bed nighttime perfume is so slept on um, this is the noir teas from Victoria's Secret and I got this because it reminded me of um, the popular girls in seventh grade who would spray this on like before and after PE so they didn't smell gross but it's just a nice slightly sweet nighttime scent so that is my 10 to 12 different potions and lotions that I use to feel feel my best in my self-care after that I slip into bed I don't do anything that'll cause me stress I'll go on Pinterest I'll read a book. I'll journal. And that is my self-care routine. I hope that after this episode, 
you've been inspired to take your self-care one step further um, and invest some time into yourself and allow yourself to feel good for a moment. These are stressful times, you know. Um, We all deserve a night to just feel relaxed. I want to know, what are your guilty pleasure self-care habits? Let's all elevate, level up our self-care game together. Especially now that it's fall and winter, we're going to be spending a lot more time indoors and we're all going to have a lot more dry skin. Thanks for tuning in and I'll check in with you guys next Monday morning. Bye.